Welcome to Training Unleashed, the show that will help you design and deliver training that's off the chain and will make a difference. Now, here's your host, Evan Hackle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to an exciting edition of Training Unleashed. I have a great guest with me. His name is Bill Parkinson. He is with the Sales Ball. We're going to be talking about a lot of things, but as you all know, I start the show off and I thank my sponsors, the C-Suite Radio, C-Suite TV. And it just so happens that Bill knows Jeffrey Hazlett, who is the CEO and chairman of the C-Suite. So uh, we're both, uh, Bill, why don't you say hi, Jeffrey? Hi, Jeffrey. <laughs> he'll say, he'll say, who are you? Who? Yeah, he might say, who are you? But, you know, I, I, I would like to think because Jeffrey has uh, 250 or more podcasts. I don't think he has time to listen to all of them. Uh, but Jeffrey's a terrific guy. And C-Suite's a terrific organization. And I appreciate them as a sponsor. Um, Bill and I are going to have an interesting conversation because he's an expert in two things that I think are very important in the world of training. Uh, one is selling skills. And we're going to actually spend some time talking about selling skills as how they can relate to you in the world of training, how we can, how we can support you in getting, and, and I, I use the term selling, but maybe because some people don't like the word selling, we can talk about how we can advocate for training within our organization, both up and to the masses for usage. And then we're going to spend some time talking about time management, which is going to be really cool. But the first thing we're going to talk about, because I think this is really interesting, is Bill's a lifelong learner. And anybody who listens to the show knows I'm a lifelong learner. And I appreciate all of you because you're obviously committed lifelong learners. And he and I were chatting and I stopped him because I want to put it on the show about music and what he's doing to take him to take his music up another level. And uh, and I say, I'm going to say this nicely, because uh, most of you are listening. Uh, Bill, like myself, is a more mature person um, in, okay. terms of, in terms of age. Um, so, you know, it's always to me great to see people that are continuing regardless of age to get better. So, Bill, tell us about the guitar and how you up level and keep uh, learning. My uh, daughter. My middle daughter, Emma, was up at Cornell, and during COVID, she said, Dad, would you like to take guitar lessons with me? And I said, yeah, that'd be great. So we found a guy locally, we got, had some connections, found a guy locally, and uh, so we were doing Zoom every other, I think it was every week, we started doing Zoom guitar lessons. And I played since I was in seventh grade, but I've never known anything about it. I just played some basic chords. So we got going on it. And um, he, she dropped off. She was getting her doctorate and uh, she had to focus on that, but I kept going. So now it's been a couple of years and now I'm every other week and I am still dumb as a box of rocks, Devin. It's just, it, it's the hardest thing other than learning how to sell. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Music theory, music theory is, as we say in Boston, wicked hard. <laughs> and it, it just, it bounces off my forehead. I have to hear it a dozen times and I have to, I have to work harder. It's very, it's really, really good. Uh, lesson for salespeople but doesn't come naturally to you you got to work on your effort you have to out hustle everybody so during COVID, i started playing and i just started getting frustrated and i i sat down one day and i googled what do you do with guitar skills because i thought to myself i'm not going to open for tony bennett at the copa anytime soon you know two shows a week or something and this thing popped up called the patreon and patreon is a website where people put all of their content, they charge a subscription. And my business had been decimated by COVID. I, I lost $12,000 a month in coaching in three days. So wow. six months later, I Google about this silly guitar and this thing comes up and I'm like, oh my God, that's it. I'm gonna take my 40 years of sales content, I'm gonna put it up under lock and key and I'm gonna charge a subscription. My wife's a web designer. My daughter's a marketing expert, social media, and we're all together putting this thing together. And it has just, it's been so much fun, but it's really taken off. That's the, that's the sales vault, but that's where it came from. Well, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting. 
and I and I didn't know we were going to go this way, that you never really know where something leads, right? right? So you went to create special time with your daughter and ended up coming up with an idea to save your business, um, which is, you know, completely, completely cool. Uh, when you do uh, brainstorming, you know, one of the keys in brainstorming is just like take a random object, you know, so I've got here trident gum and say, okay, how can trident gum apply to whatever it is we're talking about? And it's always amazing how when you do something like that, it does bring up new stuff. So, you know, here you're doing something completely out of scope and yet, you know, it comes back. So your, your expertise is in sales and you have a niche, you're really focusing in the printing industry. Mm -hmm. But what I would like to start off with before we get into the training questions are, you know, what are the keys for effective selling? And, and I'm not talking about particularly skills, maybe it's a little skills, I, but, you know, I'm thinking more like mindset, what they need to do, practices. I'll, I'll just make it open-ended. I'm not, what are the keys to effective selling? So you and I were talking earlier about how, yes, I, I'm in the graphic arts. So my clients sell print and signage, labels, packaging, paper, which is a real challenge these days, despite what Dunder Mifflin might tell you. It's not <laughs> as easy because there's not a lot of paper out there or it's all offshore and boats waiting to come in. Um, but you and I have talked about the fact that sales is sales. And we could sit in on other industries, listen to a sales trainer who focuses on that industry and say, well, that applies, that applies. So to answer your question, Evan, here's, here's what I tell my clients. See if this doesn't make total sense. The keys to effective selling. The first one is to have an effective message. So I'm 61 years old. I started selling in 1982 when I was 21, pre-internet. So I remember going to the library. That was my Google. And hmm. we would research things. Anything 18 months old or newer was recent. And now it's just swipe, swipe, look. So, but I would work very hard to try, try and get some, something relevant to say. Now we can do it through research and there's no excuse at all to not do this. This, I believe, is the single most important selling skill a sales rep can have. The ability to look at a company and say, how does my product apply? What do I know about them? Because the website is a window to the soul of the company. So there's skill number one. Number two is target market. Target market's a huge subject. It's not just companies. You and I talked about being veteran sales reps or older. <laughs> and my market sure. was totally different. Yeah. 40 years ago when I was 21, my market was completely different. It changes one day when somebody calls you, sir, <laughs> and you realize, <laughs> oh my God, I'm that guy. So your target market changes, but you have to understand where's my sweet spot. The third issue, is prospecting process. You have to have a step-by-step, week-by-week prospecting process. Another big subject. And the fourth one is diligence and pleasant persistency. That is the most important characteristic a sales rep can have. So you tell me, you find me an industry where making a quality call to the right target market, applying a process with diligence doesn't work. That's what I think of the keys to sales. You know, it's interesting as you sit here and you, you say this, if you describe sales to a person that way, I think most people would not have fears of sales. Right. But most people are petrified of sales. And they say, and they, and they say you know, I'm not a salesperson. You hear that a lot. I'm not a salesperson. Um, and, and generally the implication isn't that, is that salespeople are bad in some fashion. And, and I and I honestly think that, that the most noble field is selling because a really good salesperson, their goal is to create a relationship, learn what someone's true needs are and find a way to solve their needs to help them improve an outcome. Um, that's what a great salesperson does because a sale is not a sale. It is the beginning of a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, which I, which I know, uh, you know, 
And so I like, I like your start. And now I want to do a shift this into training because, you know, the name of the show is Training Unleashed. And the concept of the show is that if companies embrace training, do it right, they unleash the potential. And that a properly trained team is so much more effective. If it's sales training, they're going to sell and close more higher average tickets. If it's operational training, they're going to reduce mistakes, errors, they're going to operate more efficiently. Um, it could be, you know, improving retention, all these things that training can make a massive difference. Yet in a lot of companies, the training department are afraid to ask, afraid to get the support or not getting the buy-in from man or not getting the buy-in from management. So, you know, what I asked you before the show was let's, because this is our audience, um, what advice can we give them to help them get the, and we won't use the word sale, not to sell management, but to advocate with management to build the support necessary to get not just the funds, but to get management to say, this is important to the organization. Well, I can't answer that question without talking about sales because I look at everything as a sales call. Sure. You get pulled over by a cop, you're in a sales call right now. You check into a hotel, but you really want to be upgraded to the suite, you're in a sales call right now. Every Starbucks, I don't care. You're walking your dog. The dog every is a relationship sales you have in life. And and every exchange. So you go to it's it's all comes down to Dale Carnegie. The best book on sales ever written has nothing to do with with sales. It's how to win friends and influence people. Yeah. So when I give a live presentation, I ask that question, how many people have read that book? Hands go up. And I say, look around, keep your hands up, look around the room. Are these not the top salespeople? Now watch this. How many people have read that book multiple times? Hands stay up. That is the best book on sales. And a little spoiler alert here, you might want to pause <clears throat> because I'm about to ruin it. But the premise of the book is you can get what you want when you figure out what the other guy wants and help him to get it. And I'm sorry, but that's gender specific. It's 1937. They didn't have pronouns back then, but or they didn't use them or apply them. But you can get what you want. So you want to get more funding for training. So you go to the upper management and ask some simple questions. Do you want more sales? Do you want better sales? Do you want to hire better salespeople? What do they want? You can get what you want when you figure out what they want. I see everything through that lens, Evan, everything. Yeah. I love that lens. I love that lens. And uh, I think it's incredibly important um, because it really changes the dynamic hmm. because so many times people, you know, it's budget, it's money. And, you know, I need money for this and money for that as opposed to being results. Yeah, see, here's the problem. I bet everybody who's listening to this podcast can relate to this. The problem with being a sales trainer is that when, you, when companies need sales and they need sales training, they can't afford it because they don't have sales. And then when they have the sales, they think we don't need to sales training. So we just can't win. You know, it's, it's, it's a rare company that comes forward and says, training is part of our culture. Training is ongoing. We are going to continue to invest because we want the best salespeople and because we don't ever want our sales reps to stop. That's the worst thing. I was training a company with 660 salespeople and the CEO asked me, we were up in Seattle, and the CEO asked me, what percentage of my sales reps are in cruise control? And I said, 50%. He said, what should I do about them? I said, thank them for to thank them for coming to work, but don't spend any money on guys like me because they're never going to change. He was furious with me and he stopped out of the room. He was a pretty fiery guy. And he came back the next morning. He said, I, I slept on what you said. And I think you're right. I think we're wasting our money with these guys that don't want to get to that next level. So they'll just cruise along for the other ones. We'll make them better. And we did. You know, it, it's, it's interesting you know, to have this discussion because I spent a ton of time in franchising. Mm -hmm. And um, 
there was a time in my career in franchising where underperforming franchisees really bothered me. It bothered me from a perspective that they were not running successful businesses and they engaged us to run and, you know, they bought the franchise to be successful. Great concept. Most people are making money. Most people are very successful. These people are not. And I spent fortunes trying to save them with zero results because they were not, to your point, savable. They, they had mental blocks. They had, they weren't willing to make the effort. They, you know, they, they, you know, it, it you know, I, I guess it's a personality trait to some degree. You know, I think it comes right back to, you know, lifelong learner, constantly willing to invest, constantly willing to take yourself to the next level. You know, there's an ad on T on the radio. I have no idea if it's true, but it says like 97% of salespeople never read a book, never read a book on selling you know, or something like that. And, you know, they're trying to sell a book on selling, but um, I don't know what, if the number is right or wrong, but, you know, it, you know, I interview people for sales roles all the time and I ask them, you know, how do they, you know, learn themselves and, you know, what books have you read lately? And, you know, most of the time I see people just get nervous and, and anxious. Sure. Um, so let's go the other direction because I love your answer for how to go up. Now let's go to the masses because you, you can build training, but training isn't necessarily going to be taken or attended, whether it's e-learning or live training. Um, how do you get the support of the company to actually do the training, to participate in the training? How do you sell the organization, not the management, on training? In that case, I, I don't sell them on that. What I do is I run alongside them. So I, I have a weekly sales tip that goes out to about 85,000 people all over the world. Every Monday it comes out and it's me sitting right here saying good morning and boom, and I'll riff off of something and I'll have it, I'll have it scripted. But I used to do it differently, which is a fun story. I used to have a wire up my, in my ear and I would, I would script it and I would read into GarageBand and then I would play it and I would record it. And I learned that from a, it's like a Vegas showgirl in Germany who was talking about a piece of equipment. I looked at her and said, how, how do you know this? And she pulled her hair back and she had an earpiece. She said, what comes in my ear comes out my mouth. I thought, oh my God, that's brilliant. <laughs> so I don't sell them. What I do is I say to them, I know what your problems are. So my sales tips are all solving problems they have. I don't need to sell them. I'm just building my brand. Because sooner or later, their sales are going to go down. They're going to panic. And that's when they're going to say, Bill Farquharson knows my problems because he's been talking about them every single week. So when people call me, Evan, they never ask me what I do. They ask me, when can you start? Hmm. So it's just, that's, that's brand building. You know, I sell nothing, nothing. They buy, but I'm building a brand. I'm getting the message out there, which is constantly on brand. You know, it's clear there's a theme, solving problems. Sure. Right? And every it's identifying and solving problems. That's what you're doing, which really gets back to the beginning when we talked about the keys of being a successful, a successful salesperson. Yes. Yeah, yes. you, you talked about franchising. I've got a presentation coming up the week after next, and it's to two franchises under the same roof. And uh, they, after a, I had a Zoom call with the head of training, and he said, Our, these are franchise owners, they're terrified. They will not grow because they're terrified. And I said, listen, it, it, it comes down to five words, selling. You talked about getting into a relationship or, or you know, having a conversation. I'm, I'm all about that. Five words. The first two words are, how's business? That's it. Then close your mouth. Everybody likes to talk about themselves. Dale Carnegie. Yeah. Everybody likes to talk about their business, their challenges. How has COVID affected you? All you gotta do is say, how's business? The client is then going to go off and then you need to apply three more words. Tell me more. <laughs> you don't want to say, let me solve that, but just tell me more. 
I'm an expert and tell me more, Evan. I've got six daughters. Six. Yeah. One son, six daughters. I listen. So tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. They will tell you everything you need to know to make the sale. Eventually, you can get around to saying, I can help. But by then, they would have given you all the ammunition that you need, and you haven't sold a thing. That's it. And that's what I'm going to tell this group. Five words. That'll get you over your fear of selling, because all you're doing is listening. Yeah, absolutely. I've never heard anybody say, I'm afraid of listening. Yes. Well, I'm a big believer in evoking in sales, asking the powerful questions, letting them tell you, and then, you know, and, and, and I'm sure this is a question, maybe, I assume you, you, you probably utilize, which is what would be the impact if we could solve that problem? Sure. Because sure. Th then they're describing the value. Um, yeah, you know, the, the first company I worked for, their selling motto was solve the problem, earn the order. So in my industry, they always people always say, everybody buys on price. And I say, oh, well, let's, let's dissect that. Because they're saying the buyers are wrong. And I'm going to prove to you that you are the one. I said, do you believe that if you go down a dark alley in Chicago or Boston or Detroit, late at night, the bad part of town, on a Saturday night, you're going to get mugged. Yes. Okay. So let's dissect that. Your price is too high. What came before that? Here's my price. What came before that? Here, that you can quote on this. What came before that? Can I quote on something? That's the problem. That's the alley. If you go down that road, if you get into a price-based conversation, you're going to get mugged. Solve the problem. Learn the story behind what you are trying to do get the customer talking. These are all themes as well. The more you learn, the more you listen, the better off you're going to be to solve that problem at no bid. Next thing you're going to hear is someone saying, what do I put on the PO? That was a great solution. Work, focus on their business needs, not the needs of, of their products, of your products and services. In my case, print needs, signage needs. Yeah. Talk about their business. You know, it's, it's interesting, and, and when I think of printing, I don't think of solving business problems, but I know you do, and, and because you understand your product and you understand your customers at a higher level. But we've got to shift gears because we promised people we we're going to talk about time management. Sure. And this is a, a, an important topic because a lot of people are ineffective with their management of time. And if they want to have control over their day, control over their life, not work as hard, they've got to be really good at time management. So I just open-ended question. What advice do you give people on time management? I, I think the most important part of time management is preparation. So I think that 75% of time management problems can be solved by following one rule. Never leave today without having tomorrow planned. If you go into the day with a plan, you've, get, you've set yourself up for success, but too many of us show up and say, well, what's the day going to bring? And then you've got this hitting you and this hitting you and this hitting you. What's the challenge with work-life work uh, balance? I've worked from home since I was 21 years old. My kids have known nothing but me working from home. And I'm able to give my family the most important thing I can give them, which is my presence to be focused on them, not saying, you know, not using this as an excuse. You know, I'll, I'll be right with you. There's none of that. When that phone rings, it's off. It's something else, unless it's one of my kids calling from somewhere else. But I never leave today without having tomorrow planned. I think about next week, this week. We're recording on a, on a Friday. I've already got a good idea, like a fuzzy Polaroid picture of what next week is gonna bring. I know where I am in the calendar year, I know that I've got to work harder this time of year so that when the summer comes, if it's noon on a Friday and somebody calls and says, let's get in 18, I can go because I've earned it. So I know where I am in the calendar year. I know where I am in the selling cycle. So, and that's, it's constantly looking ahead. You know, never leave today without having tomorrow planned. Think about next week, this week, and focus on 30, 60, 90 days down the road.
If you can get into that habit, at least you will have set yourself up for success. The rest of it is application. Uh, love it. I, I want to add something that has nothing to do with time management, but I, I plan my day too. I don't do what you say. I plan my day in the morning. So I get up and partly because I don't want to worry about my day when I sleep. Although I know that there are people that say, if you plan your day the night before, because of Franklin Covey uh, time management stuff, you sleep better because your day's already planned. Here nor there, I get up in the morning and I plan my day. But the thing I do that's a little different, and it's not really about time management, is intention setting and mindset. So I create three ways of being for that day based on who I'm going to be meeting with and what I'm looking to accomplish. So I know, for instance, today I have a meeting with you and I'm going to do this podcast. So this morning I declared curiosity. I declared high energy because I need that for a podcast. And I declared connection. And these are my ways of being for the day. And so I am in my day thinking about my ways of being, who, who I get to be. Um, and, you know, bank on the mix, I have different ways of being in different days. And I, I know it works for me. And, and how I would look at that, Evan, is I'd say, by looking ahead, I know what kind of a mood I need to be in. So if yeah. I've got a heavy prospecting day, I've got to be energetic. So that means I might work out in the morning. If I've got something that's going to be exhausting creatively, I need to plan into that day going for a walk or pushing away. Sure. Well, why did they give us recess when we were kids? It's to refresh. So I think we're doing the exact same thing. It's just a matter of timing. And I totally buy into the idea of putting everything down on a piece of paper and walking away from it. And that way I can close that door. My commute involves you know, stepping over a cat or two and then walking upstairs and I'm home. I get up, boom, get out of it just like that. Because I know I know what's waiting for me upstairs is the list of demands from the hostage negotiators we call children. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting that in the normal workplace, I think people take and schedule more actual off time. Like they're going to go, you know, take a 15 minute break, go for a walk, go chat with some people or something. Where at home, I think people actually have less planned yeah. time to decompress. And it's important. I mean, I will plan in my day, I'm going to go for a 10 minute walk. Yeah. Um, and, and just, you know, like you say, clear your head. We're going to run out of time. And I know you're focused on the print industry, but I think it'd be great if you tell everybody about your business and the type of clients you like to work with. Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I am involved in, as I say, graphic arts. I work with salespeople. I work with selling owners. Um, I would work with a big company like a Xerox or a Hewlett Packard who owns Indigo, big printing equi equipment, uh, Heidelberg. The franchises would hire me as well for either a keynote or to work with their, their groups, things like that. So I'm kind of, you know, spread out like that. Uh, I am... I am uh, coming out. I've got a book which is over my left shoulder here. It's called The 25 Best Print Sales Tips. And by the time this publishes, uh, this podcast drops, as they say, I will have a book on Amazon just on the 25 best sales tips. That's kind of my foray. I can yeah. talk on this, that subject forever. Um, and well, I also want people to know it's your fifth book. It's my fifth book. Yeah. yeah the, so, the first uh, one. Not so much, but we're getting there. <laughs> Anybody can write one. <laughs> right. I, I should say it's hard. To <laughs> I don't want to put that down. But no, that's but yeah, that's it, absolutely true. I I read that uh, ninety five percent of people who put a book for sale on Amazon sell no more than ten copies. Really? Yeah, but I also read that seventy six percent of all statistics are made up on the spot, including that one. <laughs> I want you to note when I quoted that ad that I said, I have no idea if the statistic is real because I heard you <laughs> because there are so many bogus ones. And, you know, I can't remember that I get the numbers right, but you know, they say that, you know, that uh, if you just listen, you retain 10%. 
if you write down and take yeah. notes, you retain 30. And if you use in the training, you retain 70 or 80% or whatever it is. I have looked everywhere to find the actual research that proves that that is in fact true. There is none. None. It's just a complete myth. Yeah. Um, and a lot of our statistics are that complete myth. So um, do you have a, a website you want to share where people that would be interested i do my my wife is my web designer and she recently split me off the billfarquison.com from my company which is salesvault.pro and that is where you will find a lot of content both free like for example you mentioned books i'm a huge reader but very few of my books are business books i like books like the four agreements the five love languages uh five elements of effective thinking these are all brilliant books that help me in my sales that have nothing to do with sales. Those are all reviewed on the site. So that's that's where you can find out more about me. I I, I love sales books too, or not sales, business books too, but I'm all, also uh, totally agree. Love languages, four agreements, very powerful, very powerful, power of now. I mean, there are a lot of great books yeah. that are, uh, that help you think. And it's, uh, being a lifelong learner, which I know you are, I am, to me, it's just, it's just critical always to get better. Okay. Um, your wife is brilliant because absolutely the sales vault pro is a much easier website to know how to spell than <laughs> Farkelson. <laughs> so, so, uh, anyhow, um, we always end the show with, if you have one tip to share, what would that one tip be? Now, I'll give you my, I'll give you my, my favorite sales tip, and I'll, I'll keep it within sales, and which is, this is for my older brother. My older brother, Andy, who's about to turn 70, is the best salesman I've ever met in my life. He was, he's the reason why I got in sales, and uh, he showed me this wad of money when I was in high school. He, he just got his first commission check, and he swears it was only about $60 in cash. But we're looking at it like, I said, did you rob a bank? What's that? So I get into sales. And my brother gave me a great piece of advice. He said, uh, it can be a lot of great pieces of advice, but this one regarding, regarding uh, sales is the best time of day to call someone and get them on the phone is just before the top of the hour because all meetings start on the hour. And just before the top of the hour, they're in their office getting ready for the meeting and they're going mm. to be... 85% more accessible. That's interesting. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I like that. Um, I tend to go with just after five. Okay. Myself. Um, when I really want to get somebody because most of their day has been done and planned. But that's, mm -hmm. a, that's, a, that's, a, I like that. I could, you know, you know, 10 minutes before the hour or something. That's a great, great tip. Speaking great of the tip. devil, that was him just calling me. Uh, <laughs> So my brother, Evan, my brother told me to find a job, which you love to do. That was the other great piece of advice. He said, yeah. work is what's going to take up the most of your time. And he was in sales for 44 years. I've been in sales for 40 years. It is a wonderful life. You get to create your own paycheck. You get to create your own hours. Why anybody else why would do anything else is beyond me. Yeah. It's also super addictive. Ah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a game and it, it's, it is a it is it is it is a lot of fun. Hmm. Um, Bill, you've been a fantastic guest. Thank I want to thank my listeners. Without you, I would have no show. I want to thank my friends at the C-Suite, C-Suite Radio and C-Suite TV. Everyone have a great day. Training Unleashed is brought to you by Tortal Training, specializing in e-learning and interactive online training solutions for corporate, government, nonprofit, and franchise organizations. Tortal makes effective training easier. Just go to tortal.net to gain access to real-world tools that can make a difference. That's tortal.net, T-O-R-T-A-L, tortal.net.